guys and Jason and I are very are, are just different in some ways. I'm much more of the pound the ground kind of person and Jason's a little bit more of a let's sit and wait and watch which could both be very effective based on I don't think one is necessarily uh, bad but it's different. I was thinking about one other thing about hunting with Brad that I really appreciate is just his sheer optimism just this like constant optimism that we're gonna find something I think a lot of that has to do with his incredible determination and sheer will kind of forces success to happen <laughs> Jason was a little bit relieved to kind of go his own way this morning and not have to deal with me hiking with me, which I get. why he didn't shoot. There was definitely, I'm sure there was a bull in that creek. first evening sit of the trip. This is a kind of a cool trip. A deer and elk hunting uh, trip. And uh, up here hunting with Jason. And you know Jason and I spend a lot of time together. He's usually the man behind the camera and a lot of our content. But on this trip, he and I are hunting together, uh, so it's kind of kind of fun, kind of special that way. And what we're gonna do, uh, just to kind of cover ground, especially the first few days, he and I are gonna split up, kind of film and hunt by ourselves, just to try and get some uh, cover some more ground. I'm really kind of excited. I've been spending a lot of time traveling around Alaska this year, hunting everywhere but my home state. So I look forward to doing a rifle hunt in late fall every year. Love it as much as I love bow hunting. And to kind of come up here and get to do that with Jason. Hopefully he gets an animal. That's pretty cool.
haven't seen the full one a little bit. So just right through these aspens here. I'm going to try to make my way down through the aspens and um, maybe use it as cover and see if there's an opening we can get in within three something. I'd be happy. If I have a good shot, I'll take it. Got the sun still up, but barely, so we're running out of time. It's pretty dark out now. You can't really see me on the camera, but I am uh, headed back to camp. Real curious what happened to Jason, and maybe he didn't go where I thought he was going to go, and that's why he didn't shoot. There was definitely, I'm sure there was a bull in that group um, that I could see, but if. Uh, as long as there aren't some like other hunters that we don't know about kind of going over to that same spot that's going to be my play for tomorrow or one of our play tomorrow is going to be go right to where those elk are at i actually saw two different groups up there i was looking at a handful of elk up higher and i looked down and saw that group of 12 or 13 whatever it was 20 kind of hard to keep track they're all just kind of filtered through the trees but there were a fair number of them so, first night, success. We got a game plan for tomorrow, which is really what I want to do.
last night, those elk that I was seeing, Jason was on top of. He just couldn't get a shot. And they were just a little bit far. So he went back towards those elk this morning. And I came right back to where I was at last night. I'm really hoping Jason gets a shot on those elk. I think more than anything on this trip, I really want Jason to get something. But yeah, they were elk bugling last night, pretty good, like right above camp. And I can't tell if that bugle I'm hearing is closer to me or if it's back towards camp. I think it's closer to me because there's I'm a couple miles from camp and about 2,000 feet above camp. I just don't think that bugle would carry that far. But there's an elk bugling and chuckling not too far from here. <laughs> Somebody thought I heard something there. I right, never go away this camera and start class. that this morning I kept hearing a bugle that sounded like it was kind of over the ridge and around the corner from the basin I was looking in. So I'm going to circle around this peak, see if I can't look down in and see any elk down in there. This is also kind of like prime time for deer. This spot is not a really like great deer spot. Deer move through here between summer and winter range as far as I can tell. So you just don't see a lot of bucks but typically when you do see one it's worth paying attention to. And right now it's about the time they should start moving through here. So hopefully we get lucky and find one.
Just got to my class and spot. Got a group of elk. About 600 yards away. There's kind of a small rack where I can see. Could be a bigger one there. I don't know yet. Sneak down to this knob. situation here. So the group of elk I just saw came up from the other side. It's coming down below me. There's another group of elk at 150 yards bedded directly below me. With kind of a small raghorn bull. He's bedded down. I'm, I'm debating in my head whether or not it's worth shooting him on the first day or waiting for something. But I think if he, if he gives me a good shot, I'm probably going to take a poke at him. Some branches kind of covering it vital, so I'm not sure if I want to shoot right now. But not what we're eating, mule deer for hunting. Well, good news is I shot a bull. Bad news is I don't know where it's at or if it's dead at this point in time. Um, not really sure what happened. He was uh, bedded about 180 yards below me and shot felt good. Um, and he ran off and I saw him go through this meadow right here where we're at right now and he looked hurt. Um, I did not see him come out the other side of this timber to my left here. So he went in the timber. I did not see him come out. It's possible he went straight down. It's possible that he went in here, bedded down and died. I really just don't know at this point in time. Look at the trees here. We've been seeing a lot of 
this sign. This is really gonna take my time. They were definitely bedded right behind me overnight. We could hear them in the, uh, from camp bugling all night. I think these guys that were up here were bugling. I think they pushed them this way. So we're gonna make a slow push up to these trees and then there's a little saddle. And it's possible they're either down in here or over that saddle. in the morning, so I'm not feeling in a rush. I'm just going to take my time. One other thing. Heard a shot up from where Brad was about 30 minutes ago. Just one shot. The area he has gone, he went this morning, has been a reliable spot for us over the years, so I've got a good feeling he got into something and made a shot. And we'll see, hopefully, here later that he had some success. We've seen both deer and elk up in that area, so cross my fingers that he had some luck this morning.